My name is Hayden Goldsworthy. I am a wedding and commercial filmmaker based out of Indiana and the Midwest. And for the last year, I have been using a Z cam for my weapon of choice. Before we get going though, I'd like to recommend following the official Zcam group on Facebook. There are so many talented individuals in there. My rig is just what I've built and there are some other people in there that have some really cool rigs as well. So go ahead and drop it a follow. If you'd like to talk to me just one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I do a lot better when it comes to responding to you guys and I love it. Everything is centered around the core setup of this camera. And that's for the main rig that you see here, a smaller, more minimal rig. And then I also have a setup just for my gimbal. Because I'm typically just working by myself, this setup has to be able to be modular and change to a smaller setup and even a gimbal setup. So everything here has been built for that. So to start off, you need a cage. I use a small rig cage. It's just the first one that I've got. I've used a lot of small rig stuff in the past and I like it. There are other amazing options out there. So pick what you think fits best for you. The cage is the most important, but there's not a specific one that's better in my opinion. One of the coolest things about these Z cams is that the mount is interchangeable on the flagship models. So I have a locking EF mount here, but I also have a locking micro four thirds mount here. You've got other options like a PL, a Leica M, and we've got some third parties trying to make an E mount, I believe a Fuji X mount. Uh, so the options may eventually be endless. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it already is endless. The only other thing that is a must for all of this setup is using CFast cards. You do have the opportunity to use SSD externally on this, but I don't recommend it as a run and gun shooter. Maybe if you're doing interview work where you're in a contained environment, you can use SSDs, but the cool thing is I actually use these cards from Silicone Power. They are really budget friendly. They may look too good to be true, but at least on my end, I have never suffered from corruption or data loss of any kind. And I honestly have not seen any of the groups I'm in or the reviews where somebody suffered from data loss. You're gonna wanna look into some handles. And there are a lot of options out there, just like the cage, but I think that there is a king of all the handles right now. And that is the Nitsi Stinger Top Handle. There is a little baby version if this is too big for you. I know my hands, you know, make this handle look massive, but it's really not. Uh, and I did not think I would like it as much as I do. The next handle, which I think is the most important piece to this entire puzzle, is from Revolver Labs. It's called the Clutch Handle. Now I've mentioned this in another video of mine when it comes to setting up your Z cam and the settings, but this handle allows you to change different settings in the camera. There's two thumb wheels and you can use ISO and shutter and pretty much any setting you can imagine and program it to these buttons and wheels. It's really amazing and as a run and gun shooter, this is the key component of this entire setup. Next up is the monitor. And here you can see that I have the OC T7 4K monitor. It's 3000 nits, which means that it's really, really bright. I have no issues seeing in daylight. Um, and this is a fairly large monitor. This may be too big for what you want, but keep watching. I have a smaller one and uh, I think you may like that if this is just too much. Besides the brightness and the quality from it that is just superb, I really enjoy the operating system on this. It uses the Pages OS, which if you use small HD, you may be familiar with. However, it's not a touchscreen, but that's not a bad thing. There's one joystick and if you get used to it, it's actually really quick and it keeps your display a lot cleaner. You don't have the issue of fingerprints. Something that a lot of people get hung up on is IBIS and the lack of in some of these cinema cameras. But if you balance the weight out really, really well, like I have done here, it really gets rid of those micro jitters and gives you this really natural movement that you don't get from IBIS. I have a couple lenses that do have image stabilization, which helps, but if I use my favorite lens like the Sigma 18-35 without image stabilization, this setup really helps me get an awesome handheld look. 90% of my stuff is shot handheld and it's because of the battery and the lens in front that balances all the weight. The first step is to get a V-mount. 
I have a lot of different V-mount batteries that I use depending on the situation. This budget-friendly option has turned into my favorite one because this goes really well into my shoulder or my chest or my knee. I love this battery. It's really cheap too, and it will power both the monitor and my camera for hours. I do have two other V-mount batteries that I really like to use. One is this really small battery from FX Leon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. It's FX L-I-O-N. It's the Nano 2, super small, but it provides the exact same amount of power as this larger one here. This is really good for my minimal rig. I also use this massive battery and it's for when I'm doing interviews all day long or ceremonies or receptions, uh, but I really like to use it with my anamorphic setup. The anamorphic lens is so big and front heavy that I have to balance it out. This battery really helps out a lot. Even though it adds on weight, it still balances it out and it's really easy to manage for several hours. To get the power into the camera with this setup, there's a couple pieces that are required. I have another FX Leon little uh, V mount adapter here and that allows the, the battery to go into the camera and kind of sit and transfer all the electronics. This however was custom made so that it has this little power cable down here going into the camera. I will have an alternative solution so you don't have to get anything custom made. The other thing that you're going to need is the Nitsi quick release adapter for V-mount. And what that allows you to do is there's actually this quick release here with two buttons and the whole thing comes off. What's really nice about this Nitsi quick release adapter is it keeps the components safe on your camera. You're not gonna damage anything, but there's also a little opening inside of the quick release adapter for you to put a normal Sony NPF battery. So if my V-mount dies, the power quickly switches to my Sony NPF battery and keeps it going until I can replace this. That has been so amazing in so many different ways at weddings and all of these really quick run and gun days. If you don't notice that your battery is about to die, this will really save you a lot. To get the power from the camera into my monitor, I had a custom cable made from Alvin's Cables. He's a great guy, he's really great at communicating, and I had him make me a two pin limo, a right angle that's rotatable to be precise, out into a Sony dummy NPF style battery. If you're not patient enough to wait for this or you need something very quickly, you can always get a D-tap out into a Sony NPF as well. Let's kind of take some things off and um, show you what's next. This may be looking more like something that you would use, right? I do have a lot of step-up rings on this lens right now to use filters, so normally this is a much smaller setup, but I'm too lazy to change that right now. Most noticeable change was no longer having this V-mount solution. It's so quick to take off, you can see that everything here is just attached. Take that cable out and you're now rocking this setup. I still do keep on the revolver handle because that's just too good. That always stays on no matter which handheld solution I am using. If you'd like an even smaller setup, take the handle off, put the monitor mount here, Pick up a little uh, tripod mount for your phone and put your phone into the monitor mount. You're going to have a super tiny setup. On the rare occasion that I do actually use a gimbal, I can take this apart really quickly so that I can start balancing it on the gimbal and keep going as quick as possible. So to do this, I take the HDMI out, I take the two pin limo out, the cable for my handle out, I can take off the revolver handle right here. I feel like this takes the longest out of the entire setup. There we go. And then the entire Nitsi handle comes off with the monitor. We are now ready to take this little guy and put it on a gimbal, so let's do it. I hate gimbals though. As you can see, we are balanced and we are rocking really well, but there's no monitor on top. So what I used was a short USB-C to lightning cable, and my phone is plugged in. I have a little cage around the Ronin S, and on that cage, I put another monitor mount. And instead of using a real monitor, I actually use my phone. It works so well as a monitoring solution, and if you don't actually have a monitor yet, you can still use a phone or a tablet to do exactly this. The last thing I have is this little tiny rubber handle that I used to use on my older cameras before I got the, the Nitsi Stinger handle. And what was really cool is I could take everything off and this is a NATO quick release as well. Using that NATO quick release on this handle allows me to tighten this handle on and have an extra handle for my bony and no muscular self. 
So when I'm out working in the field, I can use two hands and you can see it works nicely. When it comes to audio for my Z cams and when I work, I'm usually run and gunning so I don't have a full audio setup, but I love my Deity D3 Pro. I think that's it. I'm actually using it right now and it is directly plugged into this Z cam and so that I don't have to sync anything in post. I'm relatively surprised with how it sounds. It's so good for just capturing last second testimonials or interviews at weddings or events that I do. Um, but for those of you that want a true audio setup, this may not be the setup for you. You may want to look into other alternatives. I also use Tascam DR10Ls. They're just little lobs that I throw on people throughout the day. So audio isn't the biggest concern for me when it comes to this camera because I use other devices. I hope I described everything in enough detail, but not too much so that you got bored. If you have your own rig, follow me on Instagram and send me a picture of it. I love seeing rig setups. Feel like they can always improve and you can adjust them depending on what your needs are. As always, the items are in the description below. Most of them are affiliate links, so if you don't want to use them, go into incognito mode or clear the cache. However, it'll mean the world to me if you purchase some of these items through those links. Finally, if you have a hard time finding these links, I highly recommend looking at solteescameras.com. Soltees is a guy that's in the Facebook group and he helps distribute some Z-cam equipment, especially hard to find items like the E&D module or some different mounts or even the turbo mount. Sometimes he'll have a small batch come in and if you pay close attention, you could pick one up before anybody else does. That's it for me this time. I'll see you in the next one.